Hey there, this is Drama King with an Age of Empires 4 Chinese guide. Now, if you look at the Chinese, they've been a bit of an underdog Civ because according to their Civ bonuses, a lot of them don't seem that great. Uh, you have Villager, faster construction speed for buildings, which is nice. Less time building means more time gathering. And then you have Dynasties, which is situational and not always that great because you have to spend a lot of resources to build extra landmarks just to unlock these dynasty bonuses and they're not always viable it depends highly on whatever sieve you're facing or what map you're playing on and then you've got chemistry tech granted for free when advancing to the imperial age which is a free tech and it's nice but it doesn't come into effect until way late in the imperial age which some games hmm Maybe a lot of games don't even get to. And then you have docks work 20% faster. Very nice bonus, but of course it only works on water maps. And on maps like, say, Arabia, there's no water, so that's completely useless. So in all, there's one decent bonus, two meh, kind of situational bonuses, and one good bonus that's also very situational. So when you look at it from the surface, they don't seem all that great. But they do have other strengths that is hidden and not can't be seen clearly right here. So what are their strengths? They have a very overpowered late game economy, especially utilizing the Imperial official, which I will go into detail later. And they also have a very strong siege, late game siege with gunpowder. Bombards, in particular, get reload drills, which reduces reload time by 33%, lets them shoot faster, more DPS. And added to that, you get pyrotechnics, increased range of gunpowder units. So they shoot faster, do more damage, and also shoot farther. And this also gets added into Nest of Bees, which is their unique unit replacement for the mangonel, which counts as a gunpowder unit. So they also get the bombards upgrades. Except for this one. This one is specifically only to bombards, I believe, yes. And other than their strong siege, their dynasties, although it does require resources to unlock, does give them a lot of flexibility. They have the most number of unique units in the game. Juganus, Fire Lancers, Grenadiers, Nest of Bees, Imperial Officials, and this makes them very flexible, makes them very unpredictable when facing. And what about their weaknesses? Weaknesses, they have a very weak early game. So Dark Age and Feudal Ages, you only have access to Spearmen and to Archers and Juganus if you unlock the Dynasty, which requires two Feudal Age landmarks and horsemen. They're particularly weak to say something like a HRE, Feudal Age Ram Push with Man at Arms, because nothing can fight into Man at Arms. They don't have any kind of anti-armor and they just pretty much have to play defensively until they get to Castle Age, where they can get siege, crossbows, and stuff that can counter armor. Other than the weak Feudal and Dark Age, army. They also have to deal with micromanagement, extra micromanagement with their imperial officials. You have to pull them to the right buildings, put them on the right spots in order to optimize your economic growth. And then you also have dynasties, again, which requires a lot of investment, and it's not always possible, especially when they have already have such a weak early game. And then also, again, once again, their bonuses are very mediocre, situational, and not always that great. Especially if you compare it to, say, the French or the English, which have very good economic bonuses right off the bat, in effect the entire game, while these are okay, situational, and takes a lot of time to an investment to unlock and fully come online. So they're basically a late game Civ that's weak early game but has very good late game siege and economy.
Now, when it comes to unique Chinese units, I don't want to go into too much detail because they're very situational and a lot of their tool tips are pretty self-explanatory. You've got Juganu who's pretty much just archers with higher fire rates, uh, fire lancers, cav good against siege and buildings, and grenadiers which do splash damage. Then you got Nest of Bees which is a manganelle replacement. But what I really want to talk about is these Imperial officials which I believe are by far the most important Chinese unique unit. And what makes them so good is a supervise right here, which literally allows them to bend the laws of nature and create extra resources out of nothing. So basically what you do is you take one of these guys, you supervise, stick them on one of these resource drop-offs. It can be a lumber camp, your mills, or your mining camps. It does not work on town centers, unfortunately, but that's just how it is. So when you supervise, there's this little eye above them. So they're supervising this lumber camp. And now, every time a villager drops off build uh, resources, they give you plus 20%. So this one's carrying 15 wood. When he drops it off, he gives you plus 18. 15 plus 18. 15 plus 18. And you get the idea. And this is in effect the entire duration that this official is supervising. And he can be on supervised the entire game. So the entire game, instead of plus 15, plus 15, plus 15, you're getting plus 18, plus 18, plus 18. And this makes your economy insanely good, especially late game when you have larger numbers of villagers working on a resource drop-off building. And this also fuels your late game economy to make late game units such as Siege, which is further amped up by Siege bonuses and Siege tech. Another thing that the officials can do is supervise these production buildings so that they can make units faster. And it gives you, it gives you plus 200% production speed. So these horsemen are going to be coming out really quickly. You can see that speed going up way up. Spearmen, really fast. Personally, what I like to do is take one, at least one official, and put them on the clock tower, which is an H3 landmark. Let's them produce siege equipment with plus 50% health, which is huge. If you look at this bombard, they get bonuses from plus 50% from the clock tower and 10% from Ming Dynasty. It gives them 792 total health. In comparison, Look at a Lancer, it's got 253 health. That's three times the health of a heavy cavalry unit. Insane. That's a Bombard. And then you've got Nest of Bees with 396. You've got Springholds with 330. And this can all be easily financed by officials supervising these drop-off buildings, generating enough resources to keep pumping out these overpowered late-game siege, which is even further enhanced by all these unique siege tech the Chinese have access to. Now, other than supervise, they can also collect tax, which is a unique Chinese mechanic. The Chinese have a unique mechanic in which every time villagers drop off resources at a building, like they are now, it stores one gold. 262 gold stored, 263 gold stored. So that's going to be 263, 266, 267, 268, 269. So every time a villager drops off resources at one of these buildings, lumber camps, mills, mining camps, they will store one gold. And once this gold is stored, the officials will run to them, grab it, and return to the town center. So you want to turn on your tax collection. You just grab 40 gold from that building, return it to the town center, plus 40 gold, just like that. You don't have to mine it. He grabs it. Instant 40 gold as long as it's stored in the building. 40 gold back to the town center, just like that. Also, production buildings can store gold. Basically, every time you produce a unit, it stores 4 gold at that building. So right now I'm making a horseman, it has 4 gold, now it has 8 gold. 
And it doesn't matter what type of unit you're building. It could be a spearman, a horseman, archers, knights, lancers. It will store four gold per unit produced. Eight gold, making a lancer. Twelve gold. Barracks, making a spearman, has four gold right now. It'll have eight gold when it's done. Eight gold. And the officials will then collect gold from these buildings, just like they do with the lumber camp and return it to the town center. And for this reason, you might want to consider putting more of your production buildings closer to the town center in order to minimize the official's travel time when collecting gold. And the tax collection mechanic basically allows you to recycle all these resources that you've gathered at resource production, uh, resource drop-off buildings and military production buildings in order to recycle them into gold that can be used for late game. And keep in mind that there is a small cooldown for collecting gold at each of these buildings, so you don't want to be doing them too early. Unless, until you have maybe about five or six buildings with stored gold, then you can start doing it. Otherwise, it's usually better to prioritize supervising resource production buildings. And once you have all of this optimized, you're going to be having a super strong, insane late game economy that has tons of resources producing units super fast, especially Siege. And it's, you're just going to be very strong late game, basically. Now, when it comes to Chinese landmarks, there's several. Um, for Feudal Age, I like to go for Barbican because it's a defensive landmark and it kind of helps the Chinese with their weaker early game when, they have, when they're not very good at fighting. The alternative to Barbican is the Imperial Academy, which is decent. It gives plus 100, double the tax generation by all these buildings. So this mill right here, which is in influence range, instead of getting plus one gold, per resource drop-off, it's getting plus two, plus two, plus two. And this can be good if you're lacking gold for late game, but keep in mind that um, the Imperial Academy is a late game investment. It's not going to pay off until later. And it can be a little risky and a little greedy to go for it, which is why I usually go with Barbican. And next for Castle Age, I pretty much always go with Clock Tower because it's just really good. It's one of the best. Probably the best, yeah, I'd say the best Chinese landmark there is. And it lets you produce siege engines with plus 50% health. On top of that, you can put an official on it, supervise, plus 200% production, and you get, it's like you have two clock towers producing juiced up siege engines. The alternative to that is Imperial Palace, it lets you see location of villagers. Enemy villagers. Good can be good for raiding, but if they wall up or if they have better vision, it's kind of mediocre in my opinion. Kind of is might be a bit situational. Some people might have success with it. So far, not for me. And then Imperial Age. Both are kind of mediocre, if you ask me, but I usually go with gatehouse because better walls, more damage near walls. Very good for defense. On the other hand, you got Spirit Way, which lets you build all the dynasty units that you've achieved. And again, as Chinese, I don't focus much on dynasties because they take a lot of investment. Chinese don't always have resources to do build all these landmarks and coupled with their weak early game, it's just very risky to do multiple dynasties. So Spirit Way is not recommended for me. Now, when it comes to dynasties, which I believe is actually one of the less important Chinese mechanics, because once again, um, China has a very weak early game. And if you're spending extra resources building extra landmarks, a lot of which are, aren't all that great, um, then you're wasting resources, unlocking these little benefits that aren't being spent into things like building your economy, aging up, or building defenses in a meta where there's a lot of feudal rushing, a lot of ram timing pushes, and if you 
overinvest on these landmarks, there's a good chance you'll fall behind in other areas and end up losing. Um, you normally want to get Castle Age at the very least in order to get out your Siege and other units that can fight into heavy armored units so you're not stuck on Spears, Horsemen, and Archers, which are just very basic Feudal Age units. But if you do want to go for Dynasties eventually, I think that Song Dynasty is good. It uses two very cost-effective landmarks, very cheap, and it gives you extra villager production speed, which is always good. Jukanus are a bit expensive, but they're still useful. Yuan Dynasty is a bit too expensive, in my opinion. Fire Lancers are nice, but they're kind of situational. Uh, extra food is nice. The Imperial Palace, not all that good. And the Ming Dynasty is good, but it requires huge investment in two Imperial Age landmarks. It's basically just saved for late game. It gives you plus 10% health on all military units and gives you access to these Grenadiers, which are really good. They're basically range infantry that do splash damage. And that's 18 damage. And they get buffs from HP bonuses and gunpowder. So they're very good late game if you can get to them. But once again, you have to take into account what you're facing, the sieve you're facing, if you're going to be attacked early, and all these resources that are going to be spent on landmarks that may or may not be that great in order to unlock these bonuses. You have to take a lot of things into consideration and be very careful about investing, whether it's worth the risk, whether you want to, whether it's worth it. But normally I prioritize aging up and doing the usual things before going for these. They're not a priority for me. So basically, to summarize the Chinese guide, what you want to do is use these officials to supervise and boost resource production and age up the castle where you have access to overpowered Chinese siege. And then dynasties can actually come later if you have resources to spare from doing the usual things. And once you have a large enough death ball, you want to move out with a whole bunch of siege and whatever meat shields, infantry, archers, and cav you want to put in front of them. And that's going to be your end game. And of course there are other ways to play the Chinese depending on whatever the situation demands or whatever dynasties you might try to use to throw out these out-of-the-bag, unorthodox strategies. But I hope I've given you a general idea of how best to utilize China's strengths, especially in regards to the Imperial official and their siege. And, and that's it for this guide. I uh, Feel free to drop a like or comment if you agree or disagree, especially regarding the viability of these dynasties, which I believe aren't that great. I also stream on Twitch. Feel free to drop by and say hi. I stream 1v1 games for Age of Empires. And that's all for now. I'll see you guys later.